All right, so uh, we live now. You all want to send out uh, the links to uh, to the room. We go ahead and get started. One second here. To the room. We go ahead. And Yes, sir. That's me. Okay. It's like I was sending out, sending out the link. All right, Shalom, Shalom. Was that Elder Ephraim? Shalom, Shalom. All right, man. So, um, and you put the link in where? I, I posted in in the uh, in the rooms. Uh, you can post right. it on. Facebook. I posted. I posted on Facebook. Yeah. All right, man. So, um, we are the brothers of the Mashara Yasha'ala Torah Law Enforcement Division. We are the brothers on the Council of Accountability. This is who we are, OOJ, right? So, like it, OOA, right? Office of Accountability. And wow. uh, we're here to deal with a very important issue within our community, within our nation, uh, and to bring forth the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures, and to deal with psychological effects of domestic violence. If I can get Colossians chapter three, verse 17, of a Kasha Aitha Korah. God, 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 this is the book of Colossians chapter three, verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in thy name of the Lord Hamashiach Yahushai, giving thanks to the Allah Hayim and the Father by him. So we're going to do all things in the name of our Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We're going to call him by his Hebrew name, which is Hamashiach Yahushai, by Shema Hamashiach Yahushai. All right. So, yeah, so we're, we're dealing with a very... Uh, important issue and the psychological effects of domestic violence and what does the Bible have to say about this? What leads uh, to domestic violence? Why do we have so many repeat offenders of domestic violence? And what are some preventive measures that we can take as a people to bring forth healing to our nation, right? And I want to make this very clear. It all begins with obedience to the Torah, right? It begins with um, self-control and self-evaluation and self-correction <clears throat> brought forth by the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible, right? So we, again are from the Office of Accountability. And what we want to do is provide service to our nation. What is that service that we want to provide? Accountability. Making sure that we are following 
uh, the steps that we need to step that is contained in the Torah, steps that we need to take to improve ourselves as a nation of people, right? Um, a place to turn to get, um, you know, set up in, in counsel, for encouragement, right? Also for instruction, right? And also for guidance in any area that we could possibly help you in to develop your congregation, to develop your uh, assembly, develop your camp, right? We want to do things more orderly and we want to be on one accord in all that we do, right? Uh, most importantly, as it aligns with the Torah. All right, so we're gonna deal with domestic violence, man. Um, it is a plague. Uh, a very serious plague upon our nation. And we have the numbers, we have the statistics dealing with um, how serious this thing is and how it it is translated onto the children, right? Uh, and how it brings a curse upon our people because there's a misconception. They think that uh, Hebrew Israelites are have some chauvinist spirit that we don't love our women. That uh, you know, it's all about the man. And let me make this clear: I got two daughters, so it's no way that I'm teaching that. Uh, just like the man is the children of Israel, also the the woman is the children of Israel. So we love our nation, man, woman, and child. All right. So let's let's dive off into this thing, man. Uh, First, we're going to be uh, dealing with our brother, Marika, from um, the West Coast of Babylon. And uh, let's go, man. All praise be to the most high. Hey, Shalom, man. <clears throat> Shalom. First and foremost, let's give our praises on the glory to the most high, Yah Yahweh. And I do so in the name of the only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, over our ignorant called Jesus Christ. And uh, a lot of to these other brothers that have made it here today, and they're giving their time to uh, show y'all a very important protocol and summaries and characteristics of things that we all need to watch for in the home. And we point these things out by experience and we point these things out about visual and about examples that we've seen growing up and examples that we've seen in the proof. And we're just making protocols predicated upon these things that are very pertinent to our nation. All right. So One thing we got to understand is the characteristics. So I'm going to give a brief summary. I'm not going to go through a lot. I'm just going to breeze, breeze through some things, but I'm going to make it very clear and understandable. Right. So what we got to understand is violence not only impacts the victim in the house or the home or your apartment, but all members of the family. All right. And those, those members are your children because the man and the woman is the example to the kids on how they should be, all right? And one thing we gotta understand is, is those kids are going to mimic the things that they see in the household. And they're gonna do it to their wives. Like the brother said, this, this truth is not just about the men, it's about the women too, all right? We're not gonna go into precepts on how that matters right now, but we're just delivering this to y'all right now, all right? And another one is, in the home, you have cultural responses, all right? And we always got to understand that this person is coming out of Christianity, and we got always got to be delicate to that situation. That's why you need to be courting a woman six months to a year. That's just me. I learned that coming into the truth, you know what I mean? And it's a very good thing, and we should all take, take a hold of that, all right? So cultural differences, and understand the points of the aggressor and victim and be not a respectless person. Those are characteristics that we also need to understand and pay attention to, all right? A lot of women, in the truth, don't wanna to talk to brothers in the, in the same camp because they think they're gonna be a respected person. And that's, that's not all entirely so. That, that's not, you got some brothers that are a uh, respected person, but not us. All right, we, we, we've been handpicked. And we're here to do a job about this, all right? Uh -huh. Next thing, 
we got a protocol, the official procedure or system of rules governing affairs of state diplomatic occasions, all right? So one thing we got to understand about the organizational development is that organization is related to an organization in a way that it sets up. So we want to set up these steps within the government and hold brothers accountable and sisters yeah. accountable. We hold both of y'all accountable, not just the brother, but the sister. You can't just come up to us and tell us that this brother is just, he's, he's retaliating and nobody provoked him. Right. It's, it's not so. It's, that is a crazy thing to tell us he's retaliating aggressive towards me, but nobody provoked him. Right. Some brothers is off, some sisters is off. And we won't say that uh, uh, this person's in the wrong, this person's in the right, we ain't going to be respected. Person, we blame not before we heard that cause. All right. Um, third step is documentation when we're coming into this. All right, we gotta document everything. We would, uh, our, 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 our recording, our recording procedures are very on point. Within these brothers you see right here, we always got a scribe at all times recording things, and there will always be a scribe on a call with these brothers and sisters, and there will be a follow up at all times. At the husband's respect, respectable request. All right, so. When we call in everybody, we're also going to understand that we, we got to understand the actions of the caller and the person and know that when they are attacked by an aggressor, we got to understand the voice command of somebody who won't respond to us in a proper way. These are just summary characteristics when we're talking to y'all and what we're here to give and to let you know that these are the things that we're paying attention to. We're paying attention to everything. And we're, and, and we're, um, we are taking notes on both sides and we're taking all actions into accountability. All right? A hey, slack. Hey, um, other considerations I would like to mention is routine universal screenings will happen with brothers from accountability. All right, you got Hezekiah, Officer Hezekiah. Officer Jeremiah, all right, head officer Jeremiah, myself, Marakai, and we got a couple other brothers that, you know, due to circumstances, they had to miss calls, all right? So routine universal screenings, which I said, initial response. The initial decision and action taken in reaction to a reported incident. And when it comes to that, we're not really paying attention at all times, and we really don't like outside call some people from a next door neighbor telling us that, you know, these people over here are arguing and everything, man. We think they're doing this and we think they did that. If we're not getting a call from those people right there, we will, rec we will write it down, we will record it, but those people have to then step up and make, a, 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 make an action call to it. All right. Um, screening is very important. When it comes to the action, we're screening your calls. We're calling back. We're, we're, we're taking in account that we have to be accountable as officers to listen to whatever, whatever and everything that you're saying and how you're saying it. It's your action. Your actions speak louder than words. The Office of Accountability under the Banyan Yashirala and the Mashirala Yashirala is here to not be respected persons, but to hold you accountable for everything that you do, even ourselves. Nobody's above reproach in there. All right. Everybody has put their hand to the plow and you can't take it away. All right. You have given your word and every word that comes out your mouth, you will do. And another thing we're also getting help in, and this would be things that we're taking steps to, uh, to do with the elders of council right now is how do, we, how do we take care of these PTSD triggers within the family? Or did that person come into the family with those triggers? Or, you know, during that six month courtship, did those triggers show? Is this brother paying attention to him? Is this sister paying attention to him? All right, these are emotional disrupting and disturbing triggers, all right? And our primary prevention, 
It's an important thing. It is about principles. All right, we are all principles officers, the men of Yasharala. We are priests, all right, and we're officers, a principles officers, and we're here to keep more civil, dietary, and ceremonial laws. All right, and um, that'll be the end of my little summary and presentation, but I like to bring out a couple of precepts to bring the most high in as well. Um, if any brother can, uh, I will pull it myself. Now we're reading for you, I. Call it. I can't, I can't. Sirach 11 and 28, Baba Kusha. Come on, come. Sirach chapter 11, verse 28. Judge none, bless before his death. Oh, a read. Huh. For a man shall be known in his children. And that's the first thing I said is the example in the home. A man will be known in his children. You're going to know if he's going upside his head. And, and, if, and if you don't know he's going upside that woman's head or that woman is going upside his head, you're going to see it in their children. You're going to see it in his son. His son get a wife, you're going to see the same action in his, in his son or in his wife. She's going to be a very clamorous woman because she got it from his mama. She got it from her mama. And you're going to see that uh, uh, the, the young man's going to be a lion in his house because he got it from his father. All right? Let me get one more. Um, let me get this real quick. Let me get uh, uh, Surak 8 and 11. Start at 10, and we're reading to 11. Come on, come on. To rock chapter One thing eight. we want to be, make sure to understand is that manipulation, we see it, and we see that action. We know the manipulation of both parties. All right? And we know the pettiness of both parties. Read. Come on, come on. To rock 8 and 10. Kindle not the coal of a sinner. Mm-hmm. Lest thou be Read. burnt, lest thou be burnt with the flame of his fire. Read. Oh, come. Raise not up in anger at the present of an injury. Injurious. Injurious person, lest he lie in wait to entrap thee in thy word so we can't just hit people in the head with precepts all the time and we can't keep uh, attacking our women through precepts the women can't be attacking our men through precepts and on videos rise not up in anger at an injurious man all right we, he may do it or he may not do it an injurious man have done something or he may going to do it don't do that because he is a sinner and he's going to burn you with his cold or she's going to burn with her coat. And then what she's going to do is, or what he's going to do is lay in wait and wait for you to do the same thing. And he's going to burn you with them coals and be like, see, you do the same thing too. Everybody's pointing the finger. In a marriage, nobody can do that. Nobody's pointing the finger. Blame not before thy heard thy call. No manipulation in the, in, the, in the office of accountability is here to stop all of that. All right, and I yield. Come on, come. On. Let me uh, let me just kind of establish. Uh, let me back you know what the brother was saying. All right. So, what our goal is is to establish a protocol for domestic violence. Okay, this protocol is something that can be utilized in our family structure, right? Um, which embodies several steps, right? Um, culminating with counsel of the household, right? So again, we, we desire to provide a service to the nation for healing, right? Some of our brothers and sisters are mentally, um, you know, are mentally in trouble in regards to their mindset and their view based upon the mental devastation that has taken place in America, right? 
So we have to deal with these things psychologically. We have to deal with the psychological aspects in the mind when you're dealing with these issues, man. So we want to attack it on that level, right? So initially, right, because the brother had made mention about uh, outside sources trying to file complaints. The reason that we are taking that stance is because the beginning process is confession and acknowledgement. And I want to get a few scriptures on that unless you was going into that, Jeremiah. Is you going into that? Okay. All right, good. So let's get a few scriptures, man. Um, somebody get me uh somebody get me Matthews chapter three and Hezekiah. Can you give me that one uh that you had pulled? And the one in Psalms also. Matthew what? About, about confession and acknowledgement. God. Matthews 3. And let's start you. at the first verse. Con, I got you. All right, go ahead. Uh, this is Matthew 3 and verse 1. Are right, you want me to start at 2? Start at 1. Con. This is Matthew 3, chapter 3 and verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this is what we're saying as a body, as a nation of people. This is what we are exhorting. What? Repentance. Right? Repentance. This is what we need as a people. And it comes in many forms and many levels. And we can't just repent for, you know, stepping on someone's shoes, but then we're abusing, uh, whether it be physical abuse or verbal abuse or emotional abuse. We can't, we have to repent on all levels is my point, right? So we what are trying to usher in repentance, right? And it starts with the mind and the heart, read. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his yes. path straight. What we're trying to do, brothers and sisters, is prepare the way. Help. What are you doing in your generation? We know what the disciples did. Okay? We know what the prophets did. Right? We know what Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did. But what are you doing in your generation to make an impact? What are we doing? Read it again. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. So make we're trying, we're trying to prepare the way of the Lord, make making his path what? Straight. Straight, man. Right? And it begins with the mind and in the heart, right? So let me get um verse 5. Then went out him, then went out to him Jerusalem, out and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan. Are you going? And okay. were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sin. Doing what? Confessing their sin. This is what we have to do, brothers and sisters. Initially, we have to confess, say, you know what, man? I have a problem. I thought I could overcome it. I thought I could deal with it on my own. I thought I can improve, but I can't. All right. I need I need spiritual guidance. I need prayer. Right. I need anointing oil to be poured upon me. And I need the fervent prayer of the saints, man. Right. So. What steps do we have as a body as the Masharai Yasha'ala, which is the government of Israel? What protocols do we have in place to help? a family go through such a tough situation because ultimately our goal is for the family to stay together. Why? Because we believe in change. We believe in a young man cleansing his ways. We believe that this is possible, man. Right? So we're not here to throw away our people. We're here to believe in a family that is already established. Right? And so we're just trying to create a, a system that we can rely on based upon the Torah and the gospel. Right. So give me what you got, uh, Hezekiah. Kai, Kai. This is the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another 
that ye may be healed. That we may be, we may be what? That we may, we may be healed. So read it again from the top. Confess your faults one to another. We have to confess you. our faults one to another. Why? Because that is a process of healing. So, yo, man, I, you know, I, I got a serious issue, man. You understand? And just the act of those words coming out of your mouth does something for your spirit, man. Right? It does something for your spirit. Because now you can actually start taking the steps of healing. This is the problem that we, our brothers and sisters have dealing with these other ideologies. They don't believe in their spirit that they're doing something wrong. So therefore, there's no repentance. They, they, they will never think of repenting. Why? Because they have not acknowledged they 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 even they don't know what they're doing, man. So for a person to acknowledge something is a great step towards healing. Read. John, confessing your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The actual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Exactly, man. And this is what we're talking about, right? So we believe in this. We actually believe in this. We believe in a, um, a, a power, right, that responds to us when we when we reach out in, in sincerity with our whole heart, right? And that, again, is where? In your mind and your heart. It has to begin there, right? And then you're able to confess that. Now you're able to make a transition in your life that you otherwise would not make if you keep it a secret, man. Right. You don't no one. No one is able to verbicate whatever it is your issue is to say, help that brother with that issue. Help that brother with his temper. Help that sister with her mouth. Help that help that brother not to be so quick to raise his hand, man. Actually saying what the problem is and speaking to the father and looking for um, that help from above, man. Right. What else you got there? Huh? Something in Psalms. God, one second, let me grab this. So this is what we're saying, right? And these are the uh, things that we want to deal with as, you know, the beginning effects, the psychological effects of healing, right? And so that's why initially, right, you come in here and say, you know what, man, I got a problem, right? Or your wife or your husband might say, you know, she has a problem, man, and we need to deal with this, all right? And then right there at that moment is your opportunity to what? Show some humility, man. Right? Because this is not about prying and, 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 and uh, you know, being in other people's business and affairs. It's not about that. It's about healing. It's about the restoration of the nation of Israel. That's what it's about, man. What can we do? And what protocols do we have established to help the family, man? Right? You got wow. that out? God, this is the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety, man. And this is what we're dwelling upon, right? We believe these scriptures. Do you believe them? Right? People hold up their fist. People hold up their Bible say, yeah, we the Israelites. Right? We're going to be rulers. We're going to rule this earth. We're going to rule in the kingdom, but yet you can't control yourself right now, right? You're a damn bully and a monster in your own house, whether you be man or woman, right? And the scripture deals with these things, man. And that's why we should go into the wisdom aspect of the Bible to help us deal with these particular issues, man. Come, come. Right? And having an understanding of where these things come from. Where do it derive from? What is the core of this issue, man? So we can overcome this together, right? In the multitude of counselors, there's safety, right? So you, you have to have patience, right? And love for someone to sit down and walk through these issues with them, man. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be, you know, a multitude of ups and downs, but right? But if you stay on the course and you apply these things as, as you should, Right. Ultimately, there will be healing for you. Right. Anything else on that? Doc? Kind of, I just wanted to give a precept on that uh, verse. Uh, the Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. 
without counsel uh, purposes are disappointed, but mm. in the multitude of counselors, they are established. There you go, right? So in the multitude of counselors, they're, they're established, man. So, you know, you, you might have something that you think that you want to do, but you should seek counsel. Man, should I do this, man? You know, I'm thinking about quitting this job, man. You know, uh, uh, you know, but, but it's going to put me in a bind, this, then, the third. So what should I do, man? You know, talk to your brothers, man. And this is what we're about. This is the, the brotherly love that the scripture speaks about, man. Right? Dealing with these particular issues, being being a, sh a shoulder, being a, a, a ear. You know what I mean? Sitting there and listening and helping, brother. This is what it's about, man. Anyone with any common sense can see that that's righteous, man. Right? To walk wow. with your brother, stand with your brother, encourage your brother, build your brother up, and also tell him when he's going to hell off. Okay? Hey, man. That's right. Going. That's right. All right? You need to get yourself together, brother. Oh, yeah. Right. What does the scripture say? Open rebuke is better than secret love, man. Right. That's right. So mm. we're not, we're, we don't have no problem with that. And so all of this is wrapped together. Acknowledgement, confession. Now you can begin the process of healing. All right. This is what the issue is. Right? As the brother was speaking about, what is this person's triggers? Right. Identifying those things. You know what I mean? Ch stopping before an argument get too heated, right? That's Separating right. from each other, taking a walk, right? You know, leaving out of the room. Hey, man, this is not going the right direction. I know if this continues on, it's going to get ugly in here. So you know what I need to do? I need to separate for a moment. Please give me a moment. You understand? Right? right. So we have to use these wisdoms and take these steps, man, because we don't want our men beating on our women. Neither do we want our women beating <clears throat> on our women. All right? Because it, that happens too. All right? Con, right. Con, con. It's both ways right. on that one. Aggressive, aggressive women in, in our nation, man, that have psychological problems, man. Right? And if the brother was mm -hmm. talking about six-month evaluation before taking a wife on, man, you have to evaluate this person, man. You know? Uh, and, and what is this person's problems? What was they upbringing like? What were their childhood like? What were the issues God. that they dealt with in their youth? Because you're going to deal with them. Okay? A year ain't so, that long. Or six months ain't that long, man. You think about it. Right. right. And so we have to look into these things, man, and evaluate these things and be more wise when it comes to our dealings, man. Right? So uh, I'm going to br let the br next brother come up. And uh, yo, and listen, it's a process, man. And all we're saying is let's walk it together. Go ahead, Ah. Con, Con, this uh, brother Hezekiah, you know, I want to give all praise and glory to the Most High God, uh, you know, for bringing us together to try to find a solution within our nation. That's right. Um, you know, we're trying to come together with like minded brothers. Um, and trying to find out what can we do to better our nation, all right? It starts with us. It starts somewhere, right? So um, the brother already went over um, a couple of things, very important things. Marika did, Brother Yermayah, um, you know, one of the first steps um, to domestic violence and to getting um, a resolution to the problem is like the Brother Yermayah said was, confessing and acknowledgement. Okay, we can't get to a healing process um, without confession and acknowledgement. And um, us at the uh, Apartment of Off Office of Accountability, our job is trying to keep families together. We do not want to tear families apart, okay? We want to keep, we're trying to build a nation. We want to keep families together. So this is what we're coming, we're coming together with, you know, um, and like, like, like I was saying, acknowledgement and confessions is, is key to the healing process, right? The brother already brought out Matthew chapter 3, um, James chapter 5, confess your faults for one another, right? And pray for one another, okay? This is key, okay? This is key. And we know in Matthew 18, it says if you have a fault with your brother, okay, that you go to him. 
some of y'all 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 not dealing with y'all issues okay y'all 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 um, um at each other throats but y'all not actually dealing with the issues okay and these issues are escalating because we're, we don't have a resolution so what what we're trying to do is find resolutions to the problem okay we're doing the research for y'all right so one of the um like the first step account accountability of Salakia, um acknowledgement and confession all right once you can acknowledge and you confess okay you got to learn obedience all right the man and the woman we need to learn obedience within this nation all right and i'm gonna pull a couple of scriptures out, uh, scriptures out um i'm gonna go to proverbs chapter 16 all right verse 32 and it reads hold up hey uh marika read for the brother bubba kasha you're on mute there you go all right what do you need we appreciate uh, you Pro need that. proverbs 16 verse 32 uh, I got this Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. So the Bible tells us he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. All right. So when you're thinking about getting all angry at your spouse, okay, that's not something you need to be doing. All right. We need to come up with uh, uh, resolutions to the problem. All right. Read on that. Come. And he that ruleth the spirit, then he that taketh a city. God. And he that ruleth his spirit, then he that taketh a city. See, brothers and right. sisters, this is obedience. Uh -huh. You need to learn how to rule that spirit. All right? We're supposed to be walking in the righteousness of the Most High, man. We're supposed to be walking in the spirit. All right? Of Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Shema Mashiach Yahweh right? And this is this is one of the solutions to our problems. Here is uh, Proverbs sixteen verse thirty-two. God, let's uh, go. Uh, Akim, you can give me Proverbs chapter uh, twenty-five, verse twenty-eight. This is Proverbs chapter twenty-five, verse twenty-eight. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. God. He that rule off his own spirit is like a city that is broken down. So like it. He that have no rule over his spirit. Okay? So if you can't rule your own spirit, you like a city that's broken down without walls. You right. have no fortification. You have no refuge. You have no safety. Okay? So what you need to learn how to do, Israel, all right, is rule your own spirit. And like Maraka said, hey, what's important is not only the men within our nation, not only the women within our nation, but most importantly, it's the children. Okay? Because they're the future. We want them to be better in these scriptures than us. We want them to have better righteousness than us, man. We try to raise them up. So we can't be ruling our houses like this. And, and what you think is going to stem from that? The children is going to uh, duplicate exactly what they see, like Brother Marika was huh. saying. All right, mm -hmm. so we got to realize what's important within our nation if we're going to build this nation. Okay, so I have here three common triggers that can cause domestic violence. Okay, and, and hold up before you go in there because I want to stay right there in twenty five real quick. I want to bring a precept on that man, Marika. <laughs> I, yeah, I see man. it too. I see it. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> what you need, Doc? Yeah, give me uh, right there in 25, uh, 24. All right, Kyle, this is Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 24. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wind house. So you mean to tell me? Hmm. That the Bible, in the Bible, it talks about a woman that is a brawler. See, I made it, I made it clear earlier that it's not just uh, men beating women, but also women beating men. Read it again. I, I mean, this got to be the greatest book on earth. <laughs> uh, 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 
This is Deuteronomy's Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 24. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wind house. Right. A wind house. You can't see it. You can't even see everything coming, man. <laughs> you can't see her attitude coming, man. You don't see right. nothing. Right. And the right. brother, the same way. She don't see it coming. She over there. She over there in, in her grace. The woman's in her grace, man. I love a woman in her grace, man, because she's very charismatic. She know how to calm you down. And that brother in there acting like a lion, she don't see it coming because she in order. And right. vice versa, you know. It's, it's, hey, God, man. God. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. You don't see Probably. it coming. Proverbs is a powerful <laughs> book, all right? <laughs> you know, it, it's a lot of wisdom in this book. I got a precept also for that. Um, I got two precepts, Bobby Kishak. Um, This is Proverbs chapter 21, verse 18, if you can grab that. Uh, Salaki, verse 19. Proverbs 21 and 18? 19, Salaki. Ah, I got you. Proverbs 21, verse 19? Okay. All right, this is the book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Wow. The Man. Bible says it's better to dwell in the yeah. wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. All right. Now, if you can, Bobby, I jump down to verse uh, 23. Come. Whoso keepeth his mouth, flock. This is Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth, and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Mm. Read that hey, one more time, Art. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. See, a from lot trouble. of women, a lot of men need to learn this. All right? It ain't always, you ain't always got to go back and forth. Sometimes you got to be humble. All right? Con. And you just got to, you got to just submit, man. All right, you got to all the uh, you know what it's gonna lead to. All right, it's gonna lead to anger, and what what the Bible told us, we need to learn how to rule over our own spirits. Con. All right, so Khan, Khan, all praises for that. Let me let me back off that real quick. So, I I mean, when it all comes down to it, and how I put things together is knowing the action between a man and a woman, right? Khan and knowing these actions they, they play out and, and it's and it's like a repetitive thing so this is this is the uh, uh the way of the word enemy a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something when you're acting unfriendly that means hostile to your wife when that wife is acting unfriendly to her husband you have turned into an enemy because that is a different spirit right so how do we get out of that it's an action we take, the steps we take. That's what accountability is for. So this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 25 and verse 21. If thy enemy, if thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And, and this is a different measure right here, man, a third part. Give him some wisdom. Go to Proverbs, go to Surah, go to Wisdom of Solomon. Give him that bread, talk him down. Women, use your charisma. Brothers, give her a hug. You know what I'm saying? Cool that spirit down. Be nice. Come in a different tone. That's not saying, brothers, you're punk. That's not saying, women, you're punk, even though that masculine spirit don't need to be on your women. You just need that grace and that charisma. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink, man. Everlasting water. Give him life of your Yahweh, man. Be humble. All right? Stay in your house. Woman, stay in your house. Man, stay in your house. That's how we're going to get over it. So the brother, while you in your house, you need to read and, and, and learn wisdom. Y'all need wisdom and understanding. Understand science of yourself, all right? Science means to know. To know means knowledge. Knowledge means understanding, wisdom, and discernment. Get that. If, if, what, what is that saying? Uh, Jeremiah, help me out. If, uh, wis, if, um, wisdom, if, if wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get understanding. Right. Is that right? Did I get that right? Uh, you're close. <laughs> so, hey, it's the principal thing, man. But that's how we going to care. Like to get understanding, come, a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. And hey, hey, poorly iterated, but hey, I got the point. <laughs> okay. 
Hey, we need to get this down, man. Hey, <laughs> right there. This, you got to understand that y'all can become each other's enemy, man, when you start being hostile towards one another. That's that unfriendly spirit. Show thyself friendly. Right. And it's a multitude of scriptures that we can go into, man, about your mouth, right? Huh. That's right. And, and your, in your mouth <sighs> and, um, is, is, is definitely a big part of domestic violence, right? So uh, real quick, and that's my last precept, man, and I'll let you continue. Uh, Sirach 25 and 20. Oh, that brother hit me with the giant. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 20. Like, yeah, hold on. There we go. You know, I could have went in, the, I could have went into um, this, this uh, Sirach 25, but I believe brothers and sisters are familiar with Sirach 25, so I'm trying to make a point, though. And in, in, in what happens in the, in the family structure inside the home. Read. Time. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25, and verse 20. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. So let, let me make this clear. This is not a uh, bash the woman campaign. All right? Time, what we're time, doing time. is showing uh, Problems that can escalate in a home, and what are the beginning signs of that, right? And 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 sometimes you could just verbally beat somebody down, verbally, 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 until they just snap, man, right? So the Bible says we should rule our tongue, man, right? We should rule our tongue and know when come, to eat on issues, right? Some people, uh, you know. Take the scripture, let uh, let not the sun go down on thy wrath. Some people take that to, to mean that we're going to just continue to argue all night long until we come to a, a resolution. Well, sometimes you have to come back. Sometimes you have to go and pray, right? And you have to pray to the most high that he will change his or her spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thing, right. You don't have to just argue all night because you're trying not to let the sun you go down. Supper. You understand? And so... I just wanted to bring right. that up, man. Con, con. Con, so uh, the water, uh, the water for those precepts. Um, so, yeah, like I was saying, um, if we can, um, you know, show our nation um, solutions to the problem and we can build off of these and implement some of these scriptures within our nation, I think we can we can cut down on domestic violence. Okay. But it's up. It's, it starts with us as a people, man. Right? The scriptures tell us to love, love thy brother as thyself. All right. And we're gonna get a little bit more into these scriptures as we get further into this um, this lesson, right? Um, now, like I was saying, three common triggers for domestic violence. Okay, it's a pl it's a plethora of of issues that stem into creating domestic violence. Okay. And I'm not condoning, oh, no, that, that's justified why the brother or sister did it. No. But these are three common triggers that causes domestic violence, right? If I can get you, uh, Mara Card, if you can get me um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. I, I got you. This is Genesis so like chapter 3. You read that. So the first, the first trigger would be disagreement okay because spouses have disagreement with one another it leads to emotional physical physical or mental abuse okay which is domestic violence all right so if you can read that out this is genesis chapter 3 and verse 16 unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Time. So the Bible tells us that that the um the man is to rule over the woman, right? And her desires shall be to her husband. Okay. If we can cut down a lot of disagreements. If we can build a foundation within our nation with women um, following after this scripture, okay? Putting your own understanding to the side, 
okay? Letting your desires be after your husband and him ruling over you, all right? This is not what we're, we're saying. We're going into the scriptures and finding solutions to the problem, okay? Now, if I can get you to grab 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Come huh. This is First Corinthians, Ooh, no, two chapter eleven, verse three. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is Yahweh. God. We see a structure here, right? Read that one more time. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the so, head of Christ is Yahweh. So we see structure, right? The man is over the woman, right? Christ over the man, and the Most High is over Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And it's like, God. you know, if we can, like I said before, we can't stress it. If we can get our people to literally follow this Bible, do y'all believe it? Right. Do y'all really believe the book? God. God. All right. Do y'all really believe that our our forefathers went off for not following the um the uh, commandments and the statutes? Huh? Well, guess what we got to do to fix our uh, problems and our sickness? We have to follow the instructions that was given into us. All right. We're going back to Proverbs. We got to get some wisdom out. We got to get some wisdom. Come on, bring it out. Yeah. All right. What you need? Uh, what you I'm need? Going, Tell me uh, what you need, brother. What you need? Time. One second here. Let me see what we want to grab out of this book. All right. Let me get uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. And if you can, Brother, Con, you shall is, read, read the verse 33. This is, uh, read what? Uh, Proverbs 15, uh, 15 29? Yeah, 29 through 33. Okay, Con. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, and verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. Con. The like light heard, of the uh, eye. Blood. Like we heard earlier in the book of uh, James, chapter 5. Right, uh, uh, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay, read on. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. So y'all can't. Nobody can sit here and say you putting your hands on your uh, wife is a good thing. You can't tell me that's a good report to the Most High. Okay, you need to humble down, man. You need to find a solution. And how to actually operate operate with your wife in righteousness and vice versa. You women too. All right. That's not a you, you, you threatening your husband, you know, what you gonna do, that's not a good report. Okay. Time, time, that's not time. a good report. The most high don't want you doing that. All right. I'll read on that. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. See the that here if the reproof of life abide among the wise domestic right. violence isn't wise okay that's some foolishness okay that's not showing love for your for your spouse that's not showing love for your nation Come. okay the most high didn't give you a woman uh just for you it, it, it was for building up a nation man all right um uh, read on that he that refuses, like he that refuses instruction, despises his own soul. But he that heareth reproof, getteth understanding. So our people need to get this understanding. They need to stop refusing instructions. Okay, they need to stop doing it. We need to use wisdom. All right, like the brother said, wisdom is the principal thing, right? Um, uh. Read on, not. The fear of the Lord is is the instruction of wisdom, 
And before honor is humility. Before honor is what? Humility. So you ain't gonna get no honor from your spouse if you're not being using humility. Right. Okay? Huh. You're not gonna get it. So what you need to do, if you want that honor from your spouse, you need to have humility. Okay? Now, I got a precept for that. Let's go uh, to first. And, and she gonna know it too. A oh, woman always know knows when a man has humility. Oh yeah, man. Because she gonna submit to you in all her actions. That's right. That's right, I. Right. Let me get uh First Peter's chapter five verse six. Huh. Hold up, man. Let me say something on that last comment too, because it says something about instruction, right? God. So we have to be mentally and spiritually ready for reproof, right? When you when you come. When you're dealing with this Bible and this truth, you have to make it. Listen, we all are flawed. We all have issues. We all have things that we need to work on. But that humility and what it's speaking of is you have to be mentally ready to be reproved, be corrected, be instructed. Say, hey, man, what you're doing is not right. You, know, you, you, you need to try this. You need to do this. And it's according to scripture. I'm showing it to you in the Bible. You understand? And so this wisdom is not Jeremiah's wisdom, right? It's not, it's not Marika's wisdom. It's not Hezekiah's wisdom. This is wisdom from the power in which we believe in. God. He's instructing us on how we should be able to govern ourselves, right? It's important that we learn how to govern ourselves. Uh, real quick, let me get one precept. Uh, Mark 23 and 1. Uh, man, the man all in my book. No, I'm not <laughs> the book of Sirach. over there, man. <laughs> hey, Sirach chapter 23 and verse 1. Oh, Lord, Father and Governor of all my whole life, leave me not to their counsel. And no, let me not no, no, he only governs when I'm out street teaching. What do I say? Governor of what? Governor of all my whole life. All my whole life. Mm -hmm. Oh, just on the Passover. Just on tabernacle. <laughs> right? Just, just just on the high holy days, that's when you know we that's that's the only time we seek to him for what we're supposed to be doing. No. <laughs> Must be seeking Hold on. just just doing Shabbat services. Right. right? Just, yeah. <laughs> just doing Shabbat services. Okay. No, we're supposed to be looking to him to govern our whole life. I mean, every aspect of your life, man, is found in the scriptures, man. That's why this is the great God, book on God. earth, man. That's why no other book compares, right? No other ideology compares. Leave you to your own devices. Right, the the minds of a of of uh, a normal man, a regular man. No, we're operating off the spiritual power and understanding of the Creator of the universe, man. When did you become? When did you become to have more wisdom than Him? I'm not gonna listen to the Lord. I'm gonna do it my way. And your way have gotten us 400 years of slavery here in America. Understand? That's that. right. So now we're able to we're, we're working to come out of that mindset and we have to deal with this on every level. Right. And, and listen, a man's home, a woman's home is their sanctuary away from the evil woes of this world. At home, you can have it the way you want to have it. You can listen to the music you want to listen to. You can watch what you want to watch. You can read what you want to read. But when you go out into the world, you are being bombarded with filth. So your home is the one sanctuary that you have that is yours. And you can surround yourself with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of this Bible. It tells you this in Deuteronomy chapter 6, man. Right? So we have to make ourselves humble enough to be reproved to be corrected if we come in with that mindset that i don't have all the answers i don't have this figured out 
right? I really don't know what I'm doing. Then you're going to yield yourself to the spiritual power of the most high and you're going to be better off for it rather than versus a Negro that think he knows something. You Negroes that think you know something are going to be destroyed in these last days, man. That's right. Right? So we, as a nation of people, need to humble down and submit ourselves to the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible, because that's what's going to sustain us. Not you and your simple wisdom, man. Right? I yield the floor. Khan. 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 Khan, you got that precept for me, Yaka? Uh, so I first... got that first Peter for you, Yaka. Khan, Khan. The water. First Peter chapter 5, verse... Uh... Six. This is First Peter chapter five and verse six. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of Yahweh, that He may exalt you in due time. Right, because the Most High already set everything up. Right, He said how the man's supposed to interact with his wife, how the woman's supposed to interact with the husband. All right, and guess what? You got to do. You got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Most High, man. All right, stop with all this madness. Oh, I'm this. I don't need this. Oh, he this and she this. And uh, no, do what the Most High told you to do. All right. And the brother Jeremiah from Sons of Jacob, he gonna he gonna go a little bit into that. All right. The healing process. All right. For the man and the woman. All right. Um, let me get uh two more of these uh common triggers of domestic violence. Bring it out, up. So you got another common issue, which is financial issues. All right? A lot of domestic violence stem over the financial issues. Come, All right? Come. Let me get you to grab the book of First Timothy, chapter 6, verse 5, and we'll read the verse 10. The book of First Timothy, chapter... 6 verse 5 through 10. Time, time. This is a book of First Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 10. And we're going to read to what? Uh, Verse 5 through 10. Okay, come on. It's 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 5. Now she Six, that is a widow indeed. Salakia, Salakia. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 5. Salakia. Come on. Through 10. Gotcha. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 5. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth. Supposing right, that gain is godliness. Kind. Perverse disputing such, of men God. of corrupt minds. I agree with these women, man. A lot of these men do got some corrupt minds, man. They see a couple of scriptures in the Bible, oh, the woman do this, the woman to do that, and they run with it. But they don't do they don't do what the most high said in righteousness, though. Right. The most high show me the scripture where the most high said, slap your wife and throw her down the stairs, though, because she don't listen to you. Where's that scripture at? Right. I need okay. chapter verse. <laughs> I need book, chapter, verse. Right. All right. So a lot of these brothers do have corrupt minds. We're not just going to hark on the women. We're going to get on you men, too. We're going right. to get on you. Okay. I just want to uh, say the meaning perverse of a person of their action showing a deliberate and abstinent desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable, often spite of the consequences. John, John. You perverse Negroes. That's right. Read it again from the top. I Verse can, uh, 6. So like you. Verse 5. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 5. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth. Supposing God. that game is godliness. They, they suppose that they gain. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, don't go past that. Because they suppose that their gain is godliness. They suppose slapping her across the head is godly. She ain't listening to me. She's supposed to be. I'm I'm, 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 I'm rule over her. Right? So they, sus they suspect the, uh, the game is uh, godliness. Read on. 
from such withdraw thyself. That's right. Read on. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh huh. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. All right. So guess what? All the financial issues, you need to come with an understanding. All right. That that ain't gonna do nothing for you. That's all momentary. All right. Yes, we all need to work to eat. All right, but there's other things you can do to eat too. Like grow a damn garden. Okay? Come. Separate from your enemy, man. They got you going against your husband. Got you going against your wife. Let's get back to the roots of the matter. All right? A lot of our ancestors was farmers. Okay? So we need to get back to the root of the matter. A lot of our money go to food. All right? We going to need it from the day we born until the day we die. So why not use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to grow you a damn garden in the backyard? Get you a plot of land and grow you some, um, some, um, some, some vegetables. Get you some lamb. Okay? Grow them up. Make them. All right? Multiply them. Sell them. All right? These are, these are uh, resolutions to the problem that you don't even need the financial aspect. Right? Read on that. I was listening to you for lost my spot. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Right. You got food and clothes. You should be good. Right? You got, huh. you got food and you got clothes. What the hell you need money for? I'll wait. What you need money for? Huh? Go ahead. Yo, let, hold up. Let me say something real quick too, man. Um, and one, one thing we, we have to understand as a people when it comes to the bickering that goes on in the household behind finances, right? Um, one thing that happened in the garden is that it was it was uh the serpent's intent to raise the woman up above the man, right? And so we see this same thing playing out in these last days, right? With within with especially within finances. And, and some of you sisters are not patient enough, and you don't have, I'm not talking about some lazy man that don't want to work. All right. But some of you sisters are not patient enough and don't take in consideration the curses that we are under as a people that men find themselves going from job to job. But yet you've been on your job 15 damn years and ain't never been even considered to be fighting, right? But yet you disrespect the man because he has had a multitude of jobs. He's a good man, but yet you see opportunities to tear him down based upon his shortcomings. And as the brother said, we men can't, well, you know, lean on the fact that, well, I'm cursed, so therefore, you know, I get to just uh, jump from job to job. It's a two-way street, man. You understand? It, it, within working, operating in this society, we have to operate with a certain level of humility, right? But you sisters have to be patient and understanding when you're dealing with identifying whether or not you have a good man or not, you understand? And taking into consideration the curses that these men face daily, which are more heavy, heavier upon the man, why? Because it is the enemy's goal to lift the woman up above the man, which caused disorder in the household. Now, since you're bringing home a greater portion of, of the money, now you think your say-so is, is now things are 50-50 now. Because you're bringing in more money, so now things are 50-50, but that's not what the scripture says. As a brother, when he first initially went to Genesis chapter 3, man, right? First Corinthians chapter 11. There's an order to things. And just because you bringing in uh, a, a bulk of the income doesn't mean that you're equal with your husband, right? So you still have to have more wisdom when it comes to the structure in the household, despite your 
financial wealth above him. It's, it's, it's began in our minds and how we interact with one another and your view upon him. And you go to work and you see these other nations who are, who are bringing more money than you and you look at your man and he's not bringing as much as you're bringing. So now that's a reason to look down upon this man. No, right? This man has great value when it comes to the household. He has great value when it comes to organizing and, and arranging and, 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 and establishing things within the home that is needed, especially for children, man, right? And so we have to be more, uh, we have to be, we have to be more involved in our scriptures to understand the conditions that we find ourselves in and not allow the conditions and use them as an opportunity to tear one another down. I yield the floor. Tom Walker. Powerful brother right there. Powerful brother. Con, con, all praises, all praises. Con, uh, so let's uh, continue reading that. Okay, let me get back. Uh, yeah, you at verse 9. Right? Con. This is uh, First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. I started verse 8 just to go in context, if you don't mind. Con. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So that's let me give an example. Um, we, we, we hear about, oh, the Illuminati, our people Illumin selling out, right? Okay. We hear about them selling out. So I saw a post the other day. Um, I saw a post. So lucky. We have problems. So lucky. So lucky. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. I saw a post the other day about Puff Daddy, um, Master P, and um, Dr. Dre. All right. How these brothers combined make about six billion dollars. All right. What are these brothers doing for our people? Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. So you telling me just because a brother got a lot of money, you're going to be good. Huh? So some of these brothers, they probably get a lot of enough money. They probably don't want to deal done with you. Right. All right. All right. It says, but they that be rich fall into temptations right. and snares. Now, he might want to go get somebody that, hey, that he desired more than you. Now he got some money. He can probably, you know, uh, uh, beguile her with some damn money, right? right. Or he fall into a snare. A, a snare is a trap, right? Okay, and that's what riches do to people, man. Uh, if you can uh, finish reading that, Jeremiah, he got kicked out real quick. Yeah, I seen him. Chapter and verse a lot. Uh, First Timothy six verse uh nine. Someone come. The water, the water. First Timothy chapter six, verse nine. Kyle, and it reads, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and unto many foolish and hurtful lust. There we go. Right there. Read on. Come on, come which draw men in destruction and perdition. There we go. You see what I'm saying? So it's not it's good for a man to have a lot of money, women. Okay? That's what the world teach you. Yeah, that's All for right? you. Uh, that's for you. I want a baller spirit, right? Yeah, that's right, man. <laughs> All right, you got to be you got to be born again, sisters. You got to you got to be that new creature. All right? You got to be taught as little children again. That stuff that we was learning and watching BET videos growing up in the 90s, man. All right. Them flossing and bling blinging and all this and mansions and MTV cribs and no. Nah. All right. Most I ain't dealing with that madness. All right. Uh, read on verse 10. I'm okay. For the love of money is the root of all evil. No, money is the root of all evil. Come on, come. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil. See, guess what? Women, y'all kind of love money a little bit too much, man. Right. All right? Like the brother was saying, you start you start pounding it down a man, a good man that love you dearly, trying his heart to provide for you. But maybe according to this, this racist system that's been set up, it's hard for some of these men. Some of these men got felonies before they even came into truth. All right. Hard for them to get jobs in some areas. And if, if they, they do get a job, you know, it's a low paying job. But he trying his best to provide for you. And you tearing them down. Brother out there working like a Hebrew slave. Like a Hebrew slave. OK. And you ain't you ain't taking no honor and, and, and acknowledgement in that. That the brother wake up and, and work a 12 hour shift every day. Six days a week. Okay. Now, like the brother said, the love of money is the root to all evil. Now that, that love of money can lead you into a dangerous and, and heated argument. Okay. Over financial issues. All right. Let me get uh first Peter's five and seven out. Come on, come. First Peter's five and seven and read. All right, so you women and women and men both, y'all need to take heed to this verse. Come all on, right? casting all your cares upon Him. What we should, what shall we do? I casting all your cares upon Him. No, we got to worry about money. Casting all your cares upon Him. Read on. For he careth for you. See, the most high is going to care for you. Okay? The most high is ultimately going to do, what, do what's right by you and your family. All right? You got to cast your care upon him. For he careth for you. All right? All right, so let's get to the uh, last and final. Hold up, uh, hold up. Uh, let, me, let me read six, too. Okay. Because this is what you need to do, man. Again, to submit yourself to the domestic violence protocol, brothers and sisters, to submit yourself to the protocol is an act of humility within <laughs> itself. It's an acknowledgement that you need help, as we all do. Come, because in the most chapters, there is safety. See? So the scripture says what? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Hezekiah, the mighty hand of Jeremiah, the mighty hand of Maraca. Hell no. The mighty hand of Yahweh, that he may exalt you in due time. Which what? Brings forth what? Patience also, man. Right? It's your money and you want it now. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> right? Right. So, so what we have to do, man, is uh understand what humility is and how to operate. So again, get yourself to a domestic violence protocol is a, a benefit for you and your household, right? It's, it actually helps. Because everything you've tried thus far has failed. And if I'm wrong, you wouldn't be, no charges wouldn't be brought upon you for domestic violence. That's right. You understand? So God. let's try this Bible. How about that? Go That's ahead, right. I. Con. So uh, the last and final trigger for domestic violence would be jealousy and envy, right? Jealousy and envy can lead to domestic violence. All right. Um, if I can have you grab the book of Ecclesiasticus, Syrac, chapter 9, verse 1. Syrac 9 and 1. God. And it reads, A wise judge, Salaki, that's 10. 9 and 1. 
be not jealous over the uh, over the wife of thy bosom. Ooh. Read it one and, more time, Ak. Come on, come. Be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom. Khan, be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom. Okay? Read on. Come on, come. And teach her not an evil lesson against thyself. Don't be teaching your wife evil lessons. All right? Don't be smacking her up. All right? That's an evil lesson you're trying to teach your wife. All right? We, 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 we got to... We got to understand, man. We got to show love to our nation, man. All right? And, and slapping each other up, that's not love. Now, some of you niggas need to be slapped up. <laughs> some of y'all need to be. All right, don't get me wrong. But, man, it's always a solution without getting violent with each other, man. We can all come to a common ground, man. All right? And once we understand that, we'll be a better nation. All right? Let me get uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 4. Come on, come. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 4. Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 4. Wrath is cruel, and right. anger is outrageous. Trying. But who is able to a uh, who is able to stand before envy? Who who just let me know? Who gonna right. be able to stand before envy? Huh? Wrath is cruel, right? Anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Huh? That's a question. <laughs> That's a question. Yeah. All right, and y'all need to ask y'all need to ask yourselves that. All right, let me get uh the book of Galatians chapter five verse twenty one. Come on, come Galatians five verse twenty one, and it reads: Envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling. And such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, Time. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. So you can't be envious, man. All right? Because guess what? That's against the most high. All right? We can't be envious people. All right, and I'm gonna close out with this last uh, two verses. All right, um, let's. Uh, if you can grab me the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter twelve, verse thirteen, and verse fourteen. Hey, listen, uh, we having some complications with Jeremiah. So what I want you to do, man, is I want to go into that that portion where you were speaking about the the mindset of uh, the, the American ideology. I need I, I that. Could, I could yeah, I need that. that. Yeah. So what scripture you need? Uh, let me get uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, uh, 12, verse 13 and 14. Come on, come. Ecclesiasticus 12, 13. I think I know that scripture off the top of my head. <laughs> right? But we'll Fine. read it. Fine. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, verse 13. Let us Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man, woman, and child. That's right. So we must fear God and keep his commandments. All right. Read on. Come on, come. For Yahweh shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's right. So the Most High is going to bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. 
So y'all can't hide this wickedness of domestic violence from the most high. Right. Okay. So we trying to we trying to bring a protocol to the nation okay. of Israel for a solution. All right? right. To to help our people out of love, man. We know we know it's uh uh wrongdoings on both sides, the woman and the man. All right. So Khan, Khan, I'm gonna pull this up really quick. Give me one second. And I'll jump yeah, into that. I, with I, I need that because what we're, what what the brothers about to uh, go into, brothers and sisters, is uh, the mindset, the the American ideology, or the mindset of so-called Americans, is a destructive <laughs> tool, and it is a primary source for domestic violence. So I need you all to hear this, and you know, and take this into your spirit, man. And these things that we're about to go into are, are violations to the scriptures, right? The Bible speaks against these things, but yet these things are promoted in America, right? So while he's getting that, let me get uh, Jeremiah, give me Revelations chapter 18. Come on. Give me Revelation 18. Can y'all hear me? Uh, yeah, we can no, hear you no. good. All right, come. On. Revelation Verse 18 and 1. 18 and 3. 18 and 3. Okay. This is Revelation 18 and 3. For all nations have drank drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Hold up. So it says, all nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I had a simple Negro tell me this is talking about Arabia. You think Nick, you think people all over the world trying to be like Arabians, man? Huh? Are we listening to Arabian music here in America? I don't even know what Arabian wow. music sounds like, man. <laughs> okay? But you're going to tell me that uh, uh, Arabia is Babylon, man. You got to be out of your damn mind, man. Right? Because the whole earth is trying to be like America, man. And this is why the uprising of the Hebrew Israelites is generated out of the wickedest kingdom on earth. And it's why it's seen worldwide. Right? Show me some street teaching videos of brothers in other countries that didn't learn from the brothers in America, man. All right. Show me that. Show me the movement being more prevalent in another country outside of America. Show me that. Okay? Because you can't. That's why America's Babylon. Right? So, so it says all nations, read it again. For all nations have drank of the wrath of her fornication, and the king of the earth have committed fornication with her. That fornication is the mindset, the ideology of America. And this brother is about to bring this information out, man. And I've been waiting on this, right? So you brothers and sisters at home can understand to start to evaluate your behavior in your household. What is your actual mindset? Are you a victim of this? Are you a, do, are you the one that is perpetrating this upon your family, right? Damn basketball wives, hip hop, love and hip hop and all this madness. And you bring this into your, your home, man. God. This is the wine of the wrath of the fornication of America. Which is being shot out on the airwaves, and now every mm -hmm. now you got them Arabian women trying to be the next basketball wives, man, right? So we have to look and evaluate these things for what they are, right? Uh, I, got that. I got that when you're ever you ready, y'all. Okay, come because it says, uh. For all nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of her fornication uh, and, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth 
are waxed rich through her abundancies, right? And her delicacies, right? So we know that America is, is probably 75% import now, man. All of the industries have, they moved them overseas. So now we get every, all our goods are imported. Well, not all of them, but the majority of them are imported, man. This is how the merchants of the earth have become rich. Because everything you buy is made in China, made in Thailand, made in India, right? This is, this is, mm -hmm. this is the merchants right. of the earth, right? So again, I'm reading Revelation 18 to show you that being, uh, being in America comes with an ideology. And the brother's about to go into it. Bring it out, Al. Kai, Kai. So this article here is speaking on um, uh, people actually studying um, women from Eastern European countries and how they move to America, right? And um, I'm going to read a couple of things out of here. It says, I've interacted with several dozen Eastern European women by now, mostly Polish. And these are the only three times that I have felt with a bad taste in my mouth, with a cock block was not involved. While not all my interaction with Polish women resulted in beautiful lovemaking, it is very rare that I was wondering to myself why she had a act, why she had act in a manner when I wasn't disrespectful to her. Therefore, it is easy for me to conclude that Western cultures causes direct negative harm to a women's feminine vibe and allure. Here are eight things Hold on, that read that happen. again. Read that again. It's important that we understand God. this, brothers and sisters. It reads, I have interacted with several dozen Eastern European women by now, mostly Polish, and these are the only three times that I have left with a bad taste in my mouth um, when a cock block was not involved. When, while not all my interactions with Polish women resulted in beautiful lovemaking, it is very rare that I am wondering to myself why she had act in a rude manner when I wasn't disrespectful to her. Therefore, it is easy for me to conclude that the Western cultures cause direct negative harm to a woman's feminine vibe and allure. So, so check this out, right? So, um... Even Europeans, even Europeans are being poisoned by the ideology of America. Check that out. Done. Check that out. So that lets you know that there's a certain vibration here that is different from Europe, that is different from Africa, that is different from India and China. There's a different let me let me get this back. Let me read this again. So this says here, this is Revelation 18. Man, I got to bring this out, brother. I got to bring this out. It says here, Revelation 18 and 4 now, right? We just read Revelation 18 and 3. It says, and I heard another, another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Right? So like, let me get verse 2 is what I want. And he cried mightily. With a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen. It is fallen and it has become the habitation of devils. That's right. And the hold of every foul spirit. So there's foul spirits here. Right? And what else? And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Letting us know that there's a certain vibration here that poisons the minds of the earth. And you do not get these vibrations once you move elsewhere. So this place is a place of devils, man. That's right. Understand that, family. And if it's full of devils, deceivers, then it's full of a poison mindset. And this is what we need to come out of as a people, the mindset and the ideology of America. I say leave America altogether, right? But we need to come out of the mindset of America and the ideology that comes along with it. Go ahead, Al. Time. Let me read that again. Therefore, it is easy for me to conclude that 
Western cultures causes direct negativity, harm, negative harm to a woman's feminine vibe and allure. Here are eight things that happen. Number one, she loses the ability to flirt with a man without busting his balls or ins insulting him. Number two, she does everything in her power to withhold interest. Even when it's clear that sex isn't on the agenda, she takes she plays she takes playing hard to get to an inhuman extreme. Let me read that again. She does everything in her power to withhold interest. When even it's clear that sex is on the agenda, she she takes playing hard to get to an, an inhuman extreme. Number three, she looks for every opportunity possible to turn a man's banal utterance into an opportunity to debate him on his beliefs or behavior. Number four, she uses conversations as a means to her entertainment instead of a means to get to know a man more deeply. Number five, she becomes more lazy about her appearance by gaining weight wearing flip-flops instead of heels, and cutting her hair short into strange lesbian styles. Number six, she goes out of her way to brag about her accomplishments as if she was a man while doing her best to ignore your more lofty achievements. Number seven, she becomes obsessed with her cell phone, playing with, playing with it incessantly and using it as a substitute uh, for social interactions, she loses the ability to enjoy the present moment. And number eight, she becomes a status whore, more concerned about her job, who you know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We go, we going too fast, man. We going to lucky. Yeah, we, we we got we got to talk about this, man. God. Because hey. uh, this is a say again, up. Slucky, go ahead, up, Slucky. Yeah, so this is a, a secular article which the brother's reading, but I thought it was important that it uh, highlighted the mindset of today's so-called American culture, right? So, God. so the brother, so the brother just read that this lesbian spirit, right, begins with what our sisters wearing pants. Right, uh, our sisters uh, wearing these short uh, cuttings of their hair. Uh, right, lesbians making this style cool. Right, uh, uh -huh. our sisters um, not wearing head wraps, not embracing the culture of the Hebrew Israelite nation. Right, they're not being attentive unto themselves and their appearance. Right, so let me get a uh, scripture on that real quick. Right, uh, this is Sirach. Uh, One second here. This is Sirach, uh, Um, 19 and 29, right? So it says, a man or woman, right, may be known by his looks, right? Mm -hmm. One that have understanding by his countenance when thou meetest him. So when you meet someone, your appearance is important. Right? The way you carry yourself is important. Right? So we're not big on uh, wearing heels, but what we're saying is, is that this is a secular article, and it's making a point about a woman's start to backpedal on her appearance, man. It's important. And we got some uh, background noise. All right. So what we're saying is, is that um, our sisters back paddling on their appearance, man. 
But the scripture says a man or a woman will be known by their look and their countenance when you meet them. It will tell you a lot about them, man. Right? So these things are what? Important, as the scripture says, right? Go ahead, Ab. Ezekiah, you there? Hezekiah, are you there? We can't hear you, Ak. You on mute? All right, maybe the brother will come back in. Jeremiah, you there? Come on, come on. Hey, those points, like you said, they were so powerful. They needed to be... Um, walk through a little bit slower because those yeah. those points can be actually taught on the streets as well in camps because right. that's a that's a it's a very um a big uh that's a very evil spirit that is plaguing our women you know they, they don't know you know they don't know no better they, you know we gotta we gotta hold them accountable you know once we know we gotta hold them accountable but yeah that's just something that um that you see uh quite often like um they, they, what did you say? They brag about themselves like men, you know, and, and they, they, um, they, they hold themselves to the same status of a man. So, um, and they don't understand their role like they should. Uh, I think it says in, uh, it might be Acts, Acts 17 or, or second Ezra's where it talks about the world is turned upside down. You know, this world is turned upside down. So, you know, what's, what's, What's good is evil. This is why, you know, in Proverbs 29 and 2, it talks about when the righteous rule, the people, uh, the righteous are in authority, the people will rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people mourn. You know what I'm saying? The people are mourning. They're in, they're in a mourning state, you know, even if they don't know it, you know? So, yeah, that's a, um, those are some good points the brother was pulling out. Right. Uh, uh, Hezekiah, you back? You on mute? Oh, okay, here's a Kai. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, hold on, man. My lock you, I can. One second. My whole my whole uh, phone shut down. Let me pull this back up for y'all. All right, all, all right. right. So uh, we got we got uh, plenty of people chiming in on the comment board. Uh, Jeremiah, can you see those comments? Um, hold on. Let me see. Check. Let me check that quick. I'm on my phone. I had to get on my laptop because my laptop is what's going on. Man? All right, no worries. It, it literally. Yeah, man. So listen, our point is man, that our sisters need to embrace their, uh, you know, uh, their being feminine, man. It's important. Right? Well, nobody want to be laying next to, you know, next to a man. In a right. Body. You understand? And your, your appearance is important. You understand? I, I, you know, I've been in my marriage over 15 years, and it's right. very important that you know I clean myself up and get myself together, and and, and you know try to make myself appealing to my wife, man. You understand? So these things are important, and also for her. You understand? And right. and, uh, and being feminine is a wonderful thing, and the, and our sister should embrace that, man. They should embrace that their femininity, man. Right, Hezekiah, you ready? Kai, I'm back. I'm back. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. All right, we here we you. go. Kai, not. So, um, verse, uh, verse eight, number eight. <laughs> uh, she becomes a status whore, more concerned about her job, who you are, who you know. And what you own instead of um, experiences you you've had. Now so, it says that she will become a status quo. What does that mean? Meaning she will be more uh, willing to sell herself out for status, for approval, for your likes and comments, right? 
They can got they can they can damn nine thousand twerk videos, man. Right? While we being right. shot dead in the street. Right? So this mindset takes you away from your relationship you're supposed to have with your creator, man, and your husband, and your family, and your and your um you know, your responsibilities in your household, man. We know what Proverbs 31 say. Meditate on that. And if you're not living up to that standard, then you need to work at it. It's clear. Read it. Proverbs 31. Go into the Hebrew. Understand it better. And try to make the uh, corrections in your household, man. The corrections within yourself, right? So she becomes a status whore. Go ahead. She becomes a status whore, more concerned about her job, who you know, and what you own instead of experiences you've had. And it reads, Western cultures is like a disease on the female human. I don't mm -hmm. know the exact ep epidemiology or infection or what sort of experiences cause this devastating damage. Right. But stepping foot inside the borders of America for more than three months wow. will cause a female victim to become infected with the Western virus. Wow. Y'all understand that? So I used to use that term a lot within my camp. I said, man, you, 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 you are poisoned with America with this American ideology, man. You Americanized. That's what you are. You Americanized. You think you know something. And you think that you have, you think that from the time you were a child up into your adulthood, well into your 30s, now you think that you have some sort of wisdom when you don't know a damn thing. Your whole thought process is poison. That's right. And you don't even realize it. Because your personal ideology does not line up with scripture. It don't. And these are the things that you should be focused on, man. Right? Building yourself up to what you need to be according to the Bible. Right? So being stepping foot in America for three months, what did it say? Will cause a female victim to become more infected with the Western virus. With the Western virus. Man, that is well said. That it is says, well For every year she spends in the West, she must live for 10 years in a culture where feminism and unbridled capitalism has not yet corrupted society in order Woo. to her, rid her of the disease. Wow. Unfortunately, by all times, all trace mm -hmm. of viruses are undetectable in her bloodstream. She will be old and Kriegley, no longer suitable or capable of mating. Western culture essentially renders her unsterile. See Salak that? The, it, it renders her sterile, Salakia. See that? And so again, it's going back to Revelation chapter 18. Mm -hmm. Come out of her, my people. Be not partakers of her sins. <laughs> right? Come out from that mindset. Submit yourselves. Why I gotta wear a head wrap? Why I gotta wear a dress? Why I gotta why you know why I gotta clean the house up? Why I gotta listen to my husband? Because it's gonna be better for you in the long run, man. It's gonna be better for you. It's gonna be better for us as a nation of people, right? That you operate with the spirit of humility. You come into this truth, sit your behind down. That's what you need to do, and shut the hell up, man. That's man, woman, and child. And learn. Close your mouth. Facebook um. is a playground for children. That's what Facebook is. They don't know a damn thing. They got children arguing over nonsense. Um. And that's what goes on. And that's what we need to learn how to be quiet, man. Learn how to be quiet and close our mouths and learn. In the spirit of humility, man. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3 and 4, man. This is what we have to do. And once we do that as a people, we will be better off in the long run, man. 
right? We are destroyed through this Western ideology, which this article is calling poison, calling a sickness that is undetectable in your blood. Why? Because it resides in your mind. Uh, Go ahead. Let me, I. let me read this right here. It says, um, Salak. Salak, you, Salak, you, Salak, you, Salak, you. All right, here we go. It says, American women, and like we said, we're not on no bash the women campaign. We are showing um, that it's not um, us coming up with these things. These things are actually um, taken in um, uh, 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 studies, all right? They're taking studies on women on the Western Hemisphere, right? It says, American women are so clueless about act about how to act like women that they have to relearn common sense from professionals who teach them for money that men like skirts more than pants. I'm guessing these experts also moonlight in teaching others that the sun will rise again tomorrow. Right. And it's this is the last part I want to bring out as Western women are rapidly losing the knowledge and ability to be women. Wow. Right? Just like we were saying through that, uh, through the uh, lesbian movement and things of that nature. All right. Um, so Khan, I, I yield the floor on that. Yeah, man. So all praise and glory, man, for that research that brothers have done. But we can take a look at these things and uh, these mindsets which contribute to domestic violence. There's a power struggle in the household. Right. There's a power struggle in, in, in husband and wife. And we don't know the man looking at himself, man, I got, you know, I, I try to listen to my wife. Why are you listening? You should be listening to the Bible. Right. And then you get the wisdom to instruct your wife. That's proper order. Right. And if you don't have the wisdom, then you get amongst wise men. Right. You get amongst wise men and you listen to spiritual conversations and you make yourself more available to wisdom, biblical wisdom versus whether or not the, the Lakers is going to make it to the championship this year. All right. Because we are so distracted. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing in these last days. And we are going through hardships in our households and we don't know why. The reason is why is because you have separated yourself from the most high. Jeremiah, you gonna close us out? Go on, uh, go on. Um, so I give my uh, phone starts breaking up. Like I said, I'm on my phone. So um, hopefully that don't happen. But um, Man, a lot of powerful information came out. Like you said, understanding the struggle of uh, the household. There's a power struggle in the household, right? So uh, the healing process um, that the Masara Yasharala is trying to um, establish and present to the nation of Israel, right? So uh, a little bit of a background on the women and domestic violence. It says... <clears throat> According to the Washington Post, in, in November 26, 2018, 137 women across the globe were killed every day by intimate partners. Intimate par partners are relatives. According to the 2018 report on the killing of women and girls released Sunday by the UN Nat Office of Drugs and Crime, about 87,000 were killed worldwide in 2017. 80, uh, seven. Did we lose them? Uh, your mind, you got to unmute your phone. Like your, your phone went mute. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Uh, I'm gonna say, man, you just about to bring out some powerful information, man. Come on with it. All right. Uh, right. 
Con, con. I was going to say, well, um, I don't know where I left off at, but um, why our nation isn't getting healed, right? We will seek, um, we will seek counsel, worldly counsel, but how well is that worldly counsel doing to our people? It's right. putting them back into danger. They're being killed, right? It's not really fulfilling us. It's not making us whole as a family. Um, many of these deaths could be prevented by following the law, statutes, and commandments of the Old Testament. The solution to our problem is getting back to the Torah. So we need to provide real health solutions, right? Real health solutions, real healing solutions. Uh, Proverbs uh, 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. For but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we got to make sure that our people understand not to be foolish because we're supposed to be looked at as a wise and understanding nation. Right. So we cannot be despising instruction. We know the instruction comes from the Bible. Right. So it says. Um, also. Um, the wisdom and knowledge and understanding found in the Torah is where we will find the fear needed to achieve this healing and development and development. Um, I want to go ahead and get into um, Ephesians 5 and 20. I have to keep switching back over because I know my phone will cut off if I don't. So, so like you. So Ephesians 5 and 20 says, Give thanks always hold on, hold for on. all things unto Yahweh the Holy. Hold up, Bob. Hey, Hezekiah, can yeah. you read? Oh, Hezekiah ain't on. I read it. I, give me chapter and verse. Uh, Ephesians, uh, so like Ephesians five and twenty. I just want, I just want that one for now. Come on, come. Ephesians five and twenty, and it reads. Give thanks always for all things unto Yahweh and the Father's things unto you. So like it. And the Father's in the name of our Savior, Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. Done. So we know that this right off the bat is gratification. Practicing gratification is what's going to help heal our nation. It's going to help provide healing to our people. Gratification, being thankful, right? also along with being content, right? We have to be content with what we have and not strive to be like the other nations. The Bible tells us over and over again not to go into the ways of the heathen, right? We should not be practicing after their customs. So these things have got to be learned in families to, be, to get that healing. Um, So like, can you, can you read on uh, 21? Come on, come. On, come on. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of Yahweh. Con, Why? now uh, submitting ourselves provides. So like, you want me to read on? Uh, la -la. So submitting ourselves one to another shows uh will show by getting back to the basics getting back to the biblical principles we will show it will show the uh the order of a household like the brother said earlier that there's a power struggle in the home there's divorce rates there's no healing in our nation right so we got to get back to these principles and understanding there's order in everything there's order in everything in our homes in our lives, the way the things should be. I, I the, the the points that Hezekiah brought out on the last the last points that he brought out, I didn't get to hear everything, but what I did hear was really, really powerful. And I, like I said, it, those things really need to be um really evaluated. Uh, because those things are those things were um and it's sad that we gotta um that we have to teach our women how to be women and we have to teach our men how to be men but it's necessary for this healing process. 
necessary. Um, can I get you to give me uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, Baba Kusha? I'm going to come. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Yes, sir. I'm going to come. And it reads, And the things that thou hast heard of me amongst many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Right. Right. So once we have once we get this order established, we've got to we've got to have our men uh, give proper understanding. They've got to be able to give and want to give proper understanding to their wives. Right. This is part of the healing process to be able to teach and give proper understanding to their wives, not by beating them. Right. So uh, our wives, the women have a part to play as well as the men. Right. And I know we went over those things earlier. Right. So but um, the men have got to be able to give instructions properly, uh, uh, simple instructions, effective, effective, simple instructions to where it's not complicated. You're not speaking over their heads. You're not doing too much. You can you can you can give them the information uh, uh, to them. Uh, you can give them simple information. I believe it talks about that in the book of Sarak by, uh, you know, making your point. Uh, uh, speaking, um, Salakia, paraphrasing this wrong, but uh, not speaking too many words, right? So not speaking too many words. So uh, you can get your point across uh, effectively, but not by not giving too much, right? So <clears throat> we've also got to be patient with each other, right? Uh, can we get back to um, Ephesians 5? Ephesians okay. 5 and uh, 22. Come on, come. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. Ah, so there's a, there's a. Come on, go ahead. Oh, so lucky you cut off on me. I'm I'm sorry. Um, I'm switching back and forth, like I said. So I'm kind of my phone be acting up. Um, so there's an order level that we need to know that we need to go by to be corrected. The Office of Accountability will help present their services by providing understanding to this, giving understanding to families and homes. Right. Um, I think I don't know if it was already said. But, you know, hotlines will be provided, possibly hotlines where we're talking about hotlines being provided for uh, families and wives and husbands to um, to help uh, stay connected to Israel. Right. Because this is going to be a big responsibility. And we're we're men that's that's willing to extend our time. Right. One of the most important things a, a person can give is his time, because time you can never give back. Right. So. um can you read on? I don't want to switch back over. My phone went down. Even as Hamashiach is the head of the church, he is the savior of the body. Come on, come on. Go on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Hamashiach, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Right. So this brings forth another understanding. By it, we brought forth order. We brought forth contentment, patience. This brings forth obedience. Right. Obedience. We have got to see obedience. There's an obedience level as well. Right. Where the wife is obedient to her husband, the husband is obedient to Yahweh. Uh, in Yahweh Shai, right? So he's got to be studying, like uh, Jeremiah said. You know, he why is he not in the? Why is he not studying? Why is he not in the scriptures? He's got to be studying, right? To to give proper information to his family, to give proper information to his wife, right? It starts from the head down. It starts from the head down. So, like like he said earlier, we're not uh, we're not bashing women. Um, the men has got to to get in order first. But we also got to 
uh, uh, there's two parts of this party. There's the husband and there's the wife. So we also got to um, address the wife as well. Um, right. Can I get, let me get, uh, I think uh, Isaiah 1 and 17. I think that's what I want. Isaiah 117. Con, can I get Con, come on, Con, can I get Isaiah 1 and 17 and then we can jump down to Isaiah 19. I'm 1 and 19. Come on, Con. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If ye be willing to uh, if, 17, Baba Kusha. Salah. 17. Learn to do well. Seek Con. judgment. You want me to read one? Uh, I'll just lock you. I don't, my phone cut off. Uh, you said seek judgment. That's the last thing I heard. Yeah, seek judgment. I promise my phone will be better next time. I promise the service will be better next time. Because it keeps cutting out. It's lock you. Right. But Khan, so we got to learn to do well with each other. We've got to seek judgment. This is what the scriptures are telling us, to seek counsel. Right. To seek judgment because the most high delights in, in righteous judgment. Right. A lot of people don't know this when they don't study the scriptures. Uh, but like I said earlier, the the um, the Masharai Yasharala has provided a service for us to help seek counsel, to help seek judgment, to help bring forth healing. Right. Um, can you read uh, 19? Baba Kusha? Come on. Come. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Right, so a promise to us, if we are willing and obedient, we will seek, we will get the good of the, the land. We will reap good benefits. We will have blessings. So uh, uh, obedience brings forth blessings. Obedience brings forth um, um, good understanding. It, it brings forth goodness to us. So we've got to... Um, we are establishing obedience as well and within the family, starting from the head, working our way down, right? Uh, can I get you to jump back to Ephesians 5? Uh, I'm not sure where you left off. Come on, come on. Ephesians chapter 5. I believe it was verse 20, 25. Come on. 20, yeah. Husbands, love your wives, even as Hamashiach also loved the church. And gave himself for it. Um, read on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Right. So the husband's duty is just like the duty that Yahweh Shai is doing for the church, right? He's washing the church. Why is he doing that? To present it. He's going to present it. He's going to cleanse it to make it pure, to make it clean, right? Uh, can I go ahead and get the next verse to that so I can, because I feel like I'm speaking on that. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such right. thing, but that it should be holy and without right. blemish. So this Fine, fine. So it's, it's going to be holy without blemish. So uh, just like us providing the knowledge and the scriptures, the, the man, the husband, providing, pre presenting knowledge and scriptures and good understanding to his wife, he is making her clean, right? He, by giving him, by giving her the scriptures, the wisdom of the scriptures, the, the simple principles of the law, right? Bringing her back to the Torah of the Bible is, is making her mind clean. He's presenting, he'll be able to present her to himself, right? He'll be able to start over a new canvas, right? He'll wash her away from the uh, Western culture, like the brother was bringing up. The, West, the Western culture has polluted our women, right, to right. be masculine men, and, right. and, and they should be more dainty. I don't even know, a lot of women even know what dainty means, you know what I'm saying? So we got to be, uh, our women are supposed to be more daintily. You know, uh, 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 I believe in some cultures, uh, like he said, to it takes 
what do you say? If a woman spends one year in a Western culture, she's going to have to spend 10 years in a, in a culture that that's more feminine. Right. right. To, to her. Right. Because I know um, uh, uh, looking at other cultures like in China, uh, the women take smaller steps. If you ever observe a woman in America, she's prone to taking large steps, making her look more masculine. You see what I'm saying? So and we learn this also in the book of Esther and additions of the book of Esther as well. Um, that uh, she's more daintily of a woman, which made her more attractive, which is which in lies her strength, right? Being more feminine in lies her strength, right? Not being more masculine, you know, that she doesn't, she doesn't fight well being masculine. It causes a conflict in the house, right? Um, uh, can you uh, finish out on that uh, to verse... Um, Uh, 38, 33. Uh, I'm sorry, Salakia, 28, Salakia, 28. So ought men to love their wives and their own, to love their, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Right. So you're not going to throw yourself down the stairs. You're not going to slap and punch yourself. Right. If you do, then there's another problem. That's another problem that we got to deal with and get right, because it's really it's a psychological issue that you could be passing down to your children. So we got to get that right. But um, you won't be beating yourself. You're going to treat yourself right. Healthy. Right. Good foods, things that you desire, that you delight in. Right. So you want to do that as, as well with your wife. Also, by providing her good information and good help, right? Because you want your you want your home to be healthy, okay? So, um, also uh, other steps, like I said, uh, practicing uh, uh, um, uh, contentment, practicing um, uh, giving thanks, uh, thanksgiving, um, gratitude. Uh, uh, patience, giving understanding to your wife, um, uh, seeking out prayer. Prayer does a lot by reducing anxiety and depression, uh, exercise, obedience, seeking out a support system. These things are, are what the uh, uh, Office of Accountability is trying to uh, help um, present to the nation of Israel. Um, let me get back up to it says. Um, the understand uh, the wisdom and knowledge, the wisdom and knowledge of the Torah is where we will find the fear uh, you will need to achieve healing. And um, and depending on the level of fear the person has, the of the Lord will determine the level of acknowledgement, conf um, confession and obedience. Right. Give me just a second. And um, says um, the Office of Accountability will hold every man and woman under the Masharal Yasharala accountable to the steps necessary to, to healing, right? Acknowledgement, confession, obedience. Through this, will we begin to see true repentance and healing in the nation of uh, Yasharala. Okay. Hey, uh, did you give those, uh, in my time. You got broke up earlier. Did you give those statistics of uh, domestic violence in America? Did I? Yeah. You said did I? Yeah. Did you did you bring that out already? Uh, statistics. I gave a little. Um, kind of see. Uh, some of the statistics I brought out some um, I did I didn't have all that I, I kind of cut it short but uh, like I said I got to keep switching back over um, do you want me to provide that now try to provide that get that now uh, I can probably well, try to get that now let me get that real quick all right so basically what we're saying brothers and sisters is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 where which says wherefore take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh 
that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Proverbs chapter five, verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the most high. That's what we're trying to do, right? And becoming more organized while doing so. The scripture says, do all things in decency and in order. So we're trying to become more orderly and we're trying to create systems and governmental programs to make an impact on our generation. That's our goal and that is our attempt of creating a service for the nation of Israel, man, right? So all of the information that has been brought out today is really just uh, a minimized uh, delivery of uh, the information that we have researched, right? We, 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 we're probably going to come back with a part two going into dealing with uh, the, the, the psychological effects and why are there so many reoccurrences. So just pray for us, man, as we pray for you all. We love the nation. We love the South and we love the North, right? Ephraim and Judah. That's right. We are one nation, right? And we are all dealing with these plagues and ailments within our homes. And the only way we're going to overcome these things is if we submit ourselves humbly to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, man, right? So these things are important, all right? So uh, are there any closing words from any of you, brother? John, um, this is- oh, wow. so, right. That was powerful, brother. That was powerful. <laughs> God, God, this- hey, the longer stride thing, as soon as the brother said the longer stride thing, man, I looked at every woman. <laughs> I like, oh, I, 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 me and the bomb was like, look, look she walked. She, she got a long stride. And right. then we saw the uh, the dike. She oh, just man. oh, man. So, hey, man, that is a Hezekiah. very powerful video, man. And it's very, it's very edifying on both sides. Okay. There was no respect of person God. at all times. Kai, 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 um, this brother has a Kaya. You know, um, we just try to do a good deed for the nation, give um, the understanding of what's actually going on, you know, without being biased. You know, we're going to hark on the men and we're going to hark on the women. Wicked is wicked. Right. right? So we're just trying to give a solution to the nation. You know, uh, us brothers at the uh, Office of Accountability, we're going to hold women and men accountable for their actions. That's right. right. And we're trying to come up with a solution, um, like I said before. So, you know, I want to give all praise and glory to the Most High God, Jehovah, you know, for bringing us together to try to, um, you know, fix these problems within the nation. You know, um, you know, and, and that's all I got to say about that. And, and let me say this too, man. Uh, listen, do you brothers know any camps, any assemblies, or anybody that is operating uh, off of these scriptures? We want to talk with you, man. We have jobs for you, all right? So we want to join with our brothers and sisters across the nation that we can all agree upon the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible and the belief in the Mashiach Yahushua. We can work together, all right? And so we're trying to develop social programs that can help our people as we prepare ourselves for the wilderness, man, right? So we need to have social programs we need to have development programs and we need to have um, these tools available, right? So we need greater minds. We need, we need, uh, we need your sisters uh, to be involved as well, man. So we right, trying man. to create programs for our nations so your gifts can be utilized, can be utilized by yourself. Scripture says, gather yourselves together, O nation not desire, right? Uh, Ze uh, Zechariah chapter two. Psalms 133, how beautiful it is for brother and brethren to dwell together in unity, man. Hebrews 10, 25, man, never forsake the assembly of ourselves together, man. This is what we have to do in these last days because it's only going to get worse, all right? You think it's bad now, all right? But wait wait till 7-Eleven, stop delivering bread to your store, right? When they say, uh, you know, you only get 10 gallons of gas a day, right? It's going to get worse and worse, and we're going to need each other in these last days. And so for you 
individual lights. I'm going to be a solo light in these last days. You're going to be destroyed. So if you're not looking to join hands with your nation, all right, you're going to find yourself by yourself. That's right. All right. So listen, we want to talk to everyone, man. Anybody that's operating with a body, that's operating with a cap, we want to talk with you, man. Sincerely. All right. With love and brotherhood, respect and honor. Right. So contact us, man. Contact us. All right. Uh, and with that, man, we want to say, Yahweh Bashimi, I was Quam, 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 Yashallah, man. Much love to the nation of Israel. God, God. Shalom, Shalom. 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 Shalom.